Good morning. God bless you. We are live. I apologize. Um, I know you all have computers where uh, they just decide to update whenever they decide to update. So I've been trying to get on since a few minutes before 11, and it took my computer five minutes to get to the website. It took five minutes to update. to get on live so that's where all the time just clicked away and i apologize for that god bless you and keep you you know you are just amazing and i just want to pour in to you today and let you know that you are so worthy of what god has for you this morning i've got my prayer shawl just to remind you and i love this prayer shawl it's different than the one that I got from Israel. But this one is, uh, let me see if I can get it on screen. And if I lift it up, hopefully, yeah. That's what we're gonna be doing today. And look at all these wonderful scriptures. We've got to pray. Uh, we've got to pray, amen. So I'm gonna put on my prayer shawl today. Good morning, and if you wanna give a shout out to me, That'll be fine, but if not, I understand. I want to put in the chat area because right after this, I'm sorry, I messed up my hair. Right after this, it's a prayer conference. Pastor Stephanie Wanza is hosting a prayer conference out of Atlanta, Georgia, and I will be doing the corporate prayer, and I want you all to support me, so I'm going to try to, I don't think I can get to my Facebook page now, but it's on the Facebook page and I'll try to get it into the link, but I don't want to lose uh, the camera shot or the page that I'm on if I click another link and then it's gone. If Pastor Wanza is on, I would be happy for her to just um, post or, or, or any of you, if you can go to the website where it says um, we're having church today, and then uh, you scroll down, it has a Zoom link. That's the link you're going to need to get to the prayer conference today. I am so excited. Uh, we've got a lot of things going on. Um, we're still having church, but our church services are basically going to still be here. Other than Easter, Easter, um, the only requirements that we have is if you've had your vaccine, okay, or you've uh, gone through our survey, uh, you'll be able to get in the building for our Easter service. We will only have one in-person uh, service, and that will actually be on Easter. I will be speaking at uh, uh, Apostle Malone's uh, Christ Cathedral um, churches. He's got several churches in Columbus, and he's opening up a new church in Williamsport, Ohio, and that's where we will be on Saturday, uh, fellowshipping with him with the seven last statements of Christ. Amen. I, I'm, I'm just looking forward to that. And those of you that are regular in ministry, you come to Bible study, you've been with me uh, for a while. I know that you're cleared. You're welcome to ride with me to Williamsport if you are interested. Um, so God bless. Let's uh, say a prayer. Amen. I want to try to get some music started. I it was just the internet was so slow this morning. I didn't want to uh, have a lot of stuff going on uh, at the same time. So hopefully I can get to uh, the YouTube channel. Amen. And, and just get a little bit of music uh, going in the background, giving God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Praise God. And so um, I pray that you are well, but this is a season of leadership for you. And I want to help you uh, get to it in Jesus name. So let's get some music going here. There we go, hallelujah. Not much, I call this soaking music and you probably can't even hear it. It's just something in the background. Uh, just to um, get started in service, amen? Invite somebody this uh, morning. You know, this is the month of evangelism. I talked 
last Sunday on who St. Patrick uh, was uh, in the Lord's Church. And he was kidnapped to Ireland. And then when he went back to his home, he was uh, had a burden to go back to Ireland to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, where he led 100,000 people to Christ. Um, it's more than just saying, I believe in Jesus. It's more than going to church. It's more than being a leader uh, in the church. A leader helps to bring people to the body of Christ. Amen. And that's what I want um, uh, you to do in Jesus' name. So, oh my God, let us just, just, just take 30 seconds this morning to lift your hands and surrender. God, I magnify your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. God is great and God is good and God is worthy. He is amazing. And I just want you to just um, soak in his presence this morning as we tackle a subject that you need for life. Amen. What is a leader? You know, I know what the dictionary says a leader is, but I want to make sure that I even go to the dictionary. What, you know, those of you, what is a leader? Everybody wants to be a leader. And you should, everybody can be a leader. But there's lanes of leadership. There are lanes of leadership. I need somebody to write that down. There are lanes of leadership. So there's different, different levels of leadership in the church. There's different levels of leadership in business. There's different levels of leadership in schools. There's different level leadership in uh, the restaurant business. There's different level of leadership in, um, in uh, marketing. Amen? So what level of leadership are you at? Are you an entrepreneur? That is the hardest one. That means that you are a dreamer, you're a visionary, you know, and we've been working on write the vision and make it plain. And we're almost at the end of the series, uh, equipping you and getting you ready for the journey for 2020. We can give you all the tools. Um, you have met uh, highest levels of leadership um, in the Department of Defense. You've met highest level of leadership in personnel. You've met highest levels of leadership in business and um, and different leaderships in the church, uh, uh, bishops and apostles, <clears throat> excuse me. We're gonna have Bishop Husband, excuse me, on Tuesday uh, talking about <clears throat> the power of leadership and prayer, excuse me. And so he's going to be covering you in prayer at the end of the series. And then we're gonna, I let you go on your own for another 90 days, and then we're going to check up on you. But we've been talking about visions and dreams and leadership. And so uh, let's look at the scripture on leadership, because in the spiritual gifts, they call it administration, <clears throat> the ability to lead. Why do some churches uh, flourish? It's because they have people in leadership positions that want to be there. Um, we had a leader um, at Bible study on Tuesday night that told you three things to equip you. Enthusiasm, initiation gets results. Enthusiasm, initiation gets results. Amen. And also commitment. Commitment to something that you believe in. So you've got to be enthusiastic. You have to take initiative, but you also have to be committed to what you believe in. When other people don't believe in you, when other people don't support you, when other people want you to fail, if you believe in yourself and you believe in God, God will get the results for you. So let's just look at the worldly definition of leadership. Amen. 
you know, the Webster's definition <clears throat> of leadership. It is the action of leading a group of people or an organization. And so there's different styles of leadership. So within an organization, you can be leading the personnel, the division. And even within the division, you may be over um, hiring um, uh, or interviews. Uh, so there's different styles of leadership. Um, you may be over the IT or tech support, um, or you may be over the entire organization. One thing about an entrepreneurial leader, will you do it without a dollar? Meaning, um, do you have to be paid to lead? Most pastors in this world do not take a dime from the church. They lead because not only were they called, but they were chosen. So one of the most uh, uh, misunderstood things about offering is people think that um, it goes to the pastor. It's really interesting. Um, I had a member that I took home and, and uh, brought to church because they didn't have a car. Um, but uh, I picked them up one day and they said, um, oh, I know where you live. You live in this big house. You got this big car. You got this car. It's like... A, you know, so many people get money from the church. I'm like, I've got uh, six degrees. I said, I'm senior leadership. Um, I said, I haven't taken a dime from the church. It was just interesting. The, percep the perception of success of a pastor means that, that you've taken money elsewhere. You know, the perfect example um, of a pastor that has excelled in his gift is Bishop Marvin Sapp or Bishop Million, uh, William Murphy, both of them are Grammy Award um, gospel artists, you know, and so if you see them uh, rolling in a Bentley or driving a mansion, that money didn't come from the church. The money came from hard work. And so pastors work hard to make sure that you have a lifestyle of salvation. It doesn't mean that we have to live like we're in the poorhouse. It is okay to have a, a net worth of over a million dollars. Uh, amen? It is okay to have that. That's a, a form of good leadership. And so we have to understand what leadership is. Um, leadership is leading uh, by example um, as a Christian, meaning that you may not lead an organization, but you're leading you, leading yourself out of circumstances that are not helping you. In other words, you have become a, follow, a follower of negativity. Um, uh, you know, I hate to use this example, it's overused, but look at the insurrection. People followed a, a, a big lie and went into the Capitol uh, with the uh, intent of hurting people and destroying things. So that means that they became followers of a cause that was dangerous. Who are you following? If you're not following Christ, and don't just say you're a believer, because the insurrectionists, you know, they called themselves praying in the Capitol. Uh, th those are called witchcraft prayers. I was talking to an apostle last night that was uh, going into the mission fields in areas uh, where there's no... Um, um, they're evangelizing the word of God. They're having a revival in the middle of a place where they don't believe in Christ. And I said, you uh, make sure that you are covered because when you're going in a place like that, they've already prayed against what you're trying to do, which those are called witchcraft prayers. Because if you're not praying in the name of Jesus, if you're not serving Jesus, but you call yourself a Christian, who are you following? If you're not following a pastor, it is so important to do that. So let's see uh, some of the powerful uh, scriptures. Uh, think about what Jesus did and the disciples did. Those are leaders. Those are leaders that led people into uh, the body of Christ, doing things uh, to continue to keep uh, the church uh, of the living word um, 
on fire even after even after uh jesus uh died hold on a sec, a sec uh, excuse me a second making a lot of typos here Ooh, got worse okay And I typed in the wrong thing. I was right. Scripture on leadership. And I just want to do a quick <clears throat> count me, Lord. That's not where I want to go. There we go. Okay, so the Bible talks about us as good morning. I see some folks out there. Um, good morning. Um, so those that have joined, I know some of you are um, experimenting with entrepreneurship. Please, you have missed 90 days of training to build your business. You know, some of you may have cupcake businesses. Some of you may have jewelry businesses. Uh, some of you may want to sing. Some of you may be trying to build your brand. Uh, trust me, um, uh, people that are noticing you that may uh, have money to provide to your business, they're going to look at your social media. So um, uh, keep that in mind. So let me uh, talk about, so I've given you the Webster definition of leadership, but this is in Titus. And I'm uh, reading from uh, uh the New Living Translation, okay. Um, for an overseer as of God's steward must be above reproach, and must not be ignorant or quick-tempered or drunk or violent or greedy for gain, but hospitable, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. They must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught, so that they may be able to give instruction and sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. Y'all know I'll do that. For there are many who are insubordinate, there's a business word, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those, um, uh, and I don't need to read that part. They must be silent since they are upsetting whole families by teaching for shameful gain. Um, let's look at uh, uh, Timothy. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach. And then here it says a husband of one wife or a wife to one husband, depending on um, male or female, because we have men and women in ministry, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach. And I can go on and on and on. Um, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7 says, Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and, uh, and intimate their faith. And I believe I skipped something that I wanted to share with you. Uh, again, uh, Timothy, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. And I can go on and on and on and on and on. And then it tells us to obey our leaders. But there's so many scriptures in the Bible on leadership. Um, there's at least... Uh, 900, uh, almost a thousand scriptures that tells us how to lead and how to lead by example. So you don't have to be the president of the United States, but we can compare several presidents over your lifetime and see the different styles of leadership. You know, we can compare leadership from the 1700s, the 1800s, the 1900s, and now the 2000s. What type of leader do you want to be for the visions and dreams that you have yourself envisioning to lead? Who are you going to lead? 
but it starts with leading yourself out of the bondage. And some of the bondage started a long time ago based on the company that you kept. You know, so one of the things during the Tuesday night um, Zoom calls, um, I introduce um, people that attend to all of my friends, people that they had no idea that were in my closest circles. And they're all very, very, I mean, we all have the same visions and dreams. We all believe in Christ. We um, all um, have gotten to the highest levels of leadership. Uh, some of us have started businesses or at least uh, uh, presidents or vice presidents of businesses. And if you're not around people that are building a business, who's teaching you how to stay in business? Because you will have, if you're in business, American Fitness Health and Wellness Institute has been in business for 35 years, won the Ohio Governor's Award in 2005 when I moved um, from San Antonio, Texas to Dayton, Ohio, in just five years. And nobody knew who I was, but God knows who you are. God knows the plans for you. He knows what he's birthed in you. And if there's a business that is birthing in you, then God will bring it out. If you have been called to be in ministry, God will bring it out. You don't have to mimic the pastor. Everybody can't be the pastor. So there's different lanes of leadership. That's what I shared early on. There are different lanes of leadership. There are different leadership styles. And you have to know what God has called you to do. Um, you know, we have so many dreamers, people that want to be in business, but then you have to decide, do you want to be in business or do you just want uh, to have fun with stuff? And that's where uh, you have to decide. I know that there's so much um, that I want to do. And then there's things that are going to have to dwindle down or I have to get help in these areas. You know, I'd love for someone else to start running the pantry because the pantry has gotten so big. You know, it's taken over our 5,000 square foot uh, facility, but we're doing something great. But there are people that are called to lead that area within our church or our organization. And I'm looking for that special person that I know that I can, can trust with that kind of, of um, responsibility. Amen. Uh, God is so amazing. God is so great and greatly to be praised. Amen. So you decide on what you want um, a God to do and how uh, God is working in you. So if you, I'm going to open up the line. So remember in um, an hour, uh, about an hour and a half, we're having a prayer conference. So if you've got things that you need prayed over, we've got some prayer generals, including myself, that are going to be at this conference. So I'm asking you now, is there anything that you've been wanting um, prayer for? Now is the time. Just type it in. Amen. Um, right now, we've got a lot of people that are getting those uh, stimulus checks. You know, you got 600 by December. Uh, you got 1,200 uh, last summer, and then some of you have already gotten the 1,400. You know, what do you plan to do with that money? I, I would advise you, invest in the local church. You don't have to invest in abundant season, but if you're a member, we're asking you to give that 10%. So if you get 1,400, that means 140 you want to give to God off the top. If not, that is your um, prerogative, you know, but uh, the word of God says that where your money is, where your treasure is, so is your heart. So whatever you buy off the top, that's what you're thinking about more than God. And I'm not saying this to be manipulative. I'm making sure you understand the word of God. So one of the things that we do is God says he loves a cheerful giver meaning that um, he does not need your money. It is, um, as Bishop Murphy was saying, I got a seed in the ground. Where you are planting your money is where you're planting seeds. You know, just like um, when you are in a relationship, um, 
with a man or a man with a woman, you basically um, invest, you plant seeds in that relationship because you think it's going to grow to something very special, love and, and joy and happiness and life uh, forever after. So you start investing in that relationship, right? You start uh, making sure you're available for dates. Uh, uh, you, uh, when the phone ring, you take that call right away. Amen. You, you think about that person all day long. And if you have a romantic date, uh, you may uh, take off work to go shopping to make sure you have the right outfit. You know, remember your birthday or your Valentine's Day, all of those things. You make sure that that date is perfect because you think that this man or this woman Amen. My screen has frozen. I'm not sure um, if yours have as well, but I'm going to keep talking. But you may think that that man or woman is the love of your life. So I'm not sure why it froze up, um, but I'm going to keep talking. So let me see if I can right here. There we go. So it unfroze. Okay, I'm beginning to see some there we go. I would like to ask for prayer for my grandsons. I haven't seen them in a year and a half. Amen. Um, let's let's pray now. That is an important. Um, one of the things that I also recommend is if they have a phone, you can text them, or if they have Facebook capability. Um, I'm not sure how old they are. If you know their address. Um, uh, stock up on cards, send them cards. Um, you know, if they have cash apps, make sure that you know that they are relevant in your life. Uh, make them a priority. Begin to pray um, to see them, you know, so where that prayer will manifest. Praise God. So uh, we're praying right now that you will see your grandsons. Um, you know, the, the devil has been busy, but God is busier in our families. You know, that uh, uh, that takeover spirit or the spirit of control that no one can agree with anything. I mean, with my expertise in COVID, I mean, my uh, some of my family members still didn't believe it was real. And, and that was very difficult for me. Um, so uh, people can disagree over so many things. And before you know it, a family is split. So I am praying uh, for your family as well. But don't stop living your life. Don't allow a spirit of depression to sink in. Look at creative ways that you can see them. You know, as long as there's no restraining orders involved, you know, just just put something on the porch and and or a note on the door, you know, and if you need to apologize, if it's something that you did or said, the only thing that's going to keep you from um, saying I'm sorry is being proud or pride. And, and I've got a lot of that in my family. Nobody wants to say I'm sorry, but they'll say, oh, what did I do? I don't, I don't even remember doing it. Yes, you do. Especially if you do it year after year after year after year after year for 21 years and you do it publicly, not only do um, uh, uh you remember, but other people have witnessed what you've done. So I know that's a hard pill to take this morning, but you also have to look, reflect within yourself and say, hey, did I start this mess? Then I need to clean this mess up as the matriarch of the family. Meaning don't let pride get in the way from seeing your family. Okay? And if, if it's your daughter or your son, you'll always love them. So so as the matriarch, just step up and say, I love you, you know, uh, and let's, let's get over this, amen? So that's what we want to do. So leadership, so that's a style of leadership for your family where you go to God and you say, God, even if it's not my fault, I, I, uh, uh, life is too short, I want, I want my, family as a matriarch, which means that you're the one that brought them into this world. You would have grandchildren if it wasn't for 
the seed that you planted. Amen. So uh, God bless you and keep you. So today we're talking about leadership and how you lead, how you lead your family. You know, one of the things that uh, in the church and I shared that um, people want to want the position of pastor. Okay, but there's other leaderships in the church and that's where it gets sad. So you have to know your leadership lane. You know, I, I've, as I shared even um, earlier, let me see if I can find this book, where this is a book that members get that um, belong to our church. It's a book where I teach seven different areas so that you can grow as a Christian. I had uh, one of our members actually making copies of pages in this book and trying to teach it. Uh, we don't do that here. That's actually wrong. And so, um, you know, don't try to suck up the anointing here because it will run out. You know, sucking up the anointing is trying to, to understand the deep things of God and then going to another church to show how deep you are. The devil is a lie. That's not going to work here. You know, uh, uh, you have to be planted in order to lead. You have to be committed to a cause in order to lead. You have to be enthusiastic in order to lead. You have to take initiative in order to lead. And when you do at least those three things, commitment, enthusiasm, uh, initiative, where you take uh, action towards your goals, then you will get results. You know, so uh, people can listen to this word all the time, but they're not. If you're not committed to what we're doing, where you're, uh, oh no, I'm going to give money to Joyce Myers. Well, when you need prayer, will Joyce Myers answer the phone? I'm just saying. Or do you call Abundant Season, and you know that Apostle Robinson will answer the phone? So that's an example of sucking up the anointing. You get all the, the richness of ministry at abundant season, but you'll give your treasure to Joyce Myers, which you will never see other than on a stage. You know, I met her before she was famous at St. Mary's in San Antonio, Texas, uh, when she used to wear granny glasses. That was over 30 years ago. And now that uh, we have all this technology, she's over $110 million, you're still donating to a ministry in her books where, you know, there's black businesses that are local, including, I have three books. I've got um, 12 Weapons of Spiritual Warfare. Do you have this one? Okay. So uh, what we do is a, a health book. We have uh, the pleasure program, which is all about wellness. And I've already showed you how to be a Christian. Look at all these books. Being a happy, healthy, holy woman. And then every week I've been teaching you visions and, and gave you everything that you need in order to work on your vision. I've given you uh, one or two boards like this. I gave you markers, pens, amen? In order to begin to write your vision, make it plain, that's what a leader does. A leader um, um, focuses on being on time. You know, if I'm late, I'm gonna make sure you know why. Like this morning, it took 14 minutes to get online because my computer decided to do updates for over five minutes. And then it took another five minutes to get on the internet, not sure why. You know, so this is a brand new computer, but it's still slow. And I, I've got fast Wi-Fi, but the devil will not keep me. So that means commitment, taking uh, initiative in order to get results, meaning that I did not give up because I could not get to the internet. I tried on uh, two different devices before I could even get online. And that's how you have to get uh, regarding the word of God. I'm not going to give up. You know, going into the future, this may be our way of church if this is what people want. 
you know, they feel more comfortable being online than going into a building until probably 2022 where, you know, people are vaccinated. You know, those that are vaccinated, you will easily get into our building. I have been vaccinated. You know, you've got to take the initiative. Um, you know, I'm promoting the Johnson & Johnson because that's what God told me. I'm one and done. Um, no side effects except a little bit of pain where I had the shot and then just a little fatigue the next day. And by the third day, I was fine. And so that's what God told me to do. I am so glad I did it. Um, it's one of the best decisions that I made. Um, so if you are one of those people that don't like to take shots or you know that you'll take it and then you feel some of the side effects from the first one, you're like, oh, I don't want to go back and do this again, then Johnson & Johnson is your best resort. One and done. They all have the same outcome. In other words, it'll save you 100% from death from COVID-19. And that's what you really want, is what's going to save you from dying. That's the bottom line. I thank you for joining this morning. So I am going to ask once and once only. Um, I am not going to put pressure on anyone. Uh, that's what God has shown me in this season. Um, uh, you can give by a cash app. You know, because one of the things that I asked, um, let me put my glasses on because I'm trying to type and I'm a little bit of distance from, uh, okay, that's not a dollar sign. Uh, that's still not a dollar sign. What's going on here? Dollar sign, donate, A-S-A-M-I. That's our cash app. I just posted it or um, uh, PayPal dot me slash abundant season. Or you can write a check to Abundant Season and send to 643. I'm typing, you guys. Troy Street, Dayton, Ohio, 45404. And if you need me, you can call. Amen. Praise God. Um. One of the things that I encouraged is just like if you pay your bills once a month, instead of having to worry about uh, writing a check every week to the church, uh, you pay your rent or your mortgage once a month, you pay your phone bill once a month, um, you pay your electric bill, gas bill once a month. Um, and so instead of focusing on uh, do I have money every week, I've been trying to encourage people, just give once a month. You know, just make a commitment to give once a month. Um, but the Holy Spirit has shown me that he loves a cheerful giver. He said, if you have shared over and over again with the same people giving once a month, he said to me, stop. He said, because that's not a cheerful giver. It's a giver, oh, well, I want to give. I want to, you know, I'm going to get around to it, which means that, that he is not the first thing that they think about when it comes to giving. Uh, the, the rent, yes. The phone bill, yes. The groceries, yes. But when it comes to Christ, he's the last on our list. But uh, we're the first uh, to call when, when something happens in the family. You got to get that seed in the ground, a seed of, 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 of giving and the love of giving. And you'll begin to see um, uh, so much, you know, I know that some people want to purchase, a, I, I, I purchased several homes and I purchased them um, within a year. You know, uh, if you're like, oh, I'm saving for this or I'm saving for that, God knows. But what's in God's hands will multiply faster than what's in your hands. I've got some pop-ups here reminding me of stuff. Um, what's in God's hands is more powerful than what's in your hands. So learn to give, learn to be committed to giving, you know, um, and I can't tell you, or I can't make you give, but I can tell you the power of giving. 
you know, got laughed at me when I give. Right off the top of everything that I get, whether it's a grant, um, whether it's um, a donation, whether it's a gift, whether it's, um, um, uh, you know, residual, residuals that I get monthly, 10% off of everything that comes in goes to God. And I don't even second guess it. I don't even think about it because now it's a lifestyle. It's, it's not a burden. So God doesn't want you to give when it becomes a burden. Because then down the line, you're going to remember, you know, God blessed me with this money that I didn't even know that I was going to get. Like that stimulus money is money that I prayed for you to get. It's called unexpected checks in the mail. In the mail, directly in your bank account. Give to God off the top. It is money that you didn't even know you were getting. And so the first thing you should be doing is honoring God with that amount that you didn't know you were getting. Amen. Giving God honor and glory and praise. That's what leaders do. Um, I share with you books called uh, by Simon Sinek, uh, Leaders Eat Last. And any of you that have been at Abundant Season uh, over the 11 years that we've been in existence, you have never seen me as a leader eat first. I always eat last because I want to make sure that your bellies are full and make sure that you are taken care of. And those of you that get, are getting all the blessings from the church, think about that. If you're not investing in what's blessing you, how will the church grow? God's keeping it open and God is blessing us, but it's time for you to put God first. If you're a true leader, you've got to put God first. And then that's where you're committed. That's where you become enthusiastic. That's where you take initiation. That's where you get results. Otherwise, those of you that are trying to start business, you're excited when you buy stuff. But that's it. You got to make that business plan. Ask yourself, 90 days, you said, I'm going into business. Have you spent a dime on a business name? Have you spent a, a time writing that business plan? That shows if you're committed or you just want to buy stuff. So think about that. You know, you, you know, people like to be personal shoppers. If there's no plan, if you're not working on a plan to the purpose that you want, it's a hobby. And it's okay to have a hobby. Just know what it is. Those of us that, would, uh, that have businesses, you know, just uh, a square feet is normally anywhere from $5 to uh, $40 a feet. We have 5,000 square feet of business space. Think about that. You do the math. So that's just to open a door. That doesn't include paying the light bill, the, uh, the heating bill, the water bill, the phone bills, um, all the furniture you see, the refrigerated areas, all of that takes thousands of, and thousands and thousands of dollars. So I thank God for those that have committed to Abundant Season and American Fitness that have sold into the ministry and our faith-based wellness organization. Without you, we wouldn't still be in existence. And I know God sees uh, the commitment to him first. He sees the leadership. He sees that every dime, every dime, every dollar is spent wisely. Amen. So there's where you have to give. It's completely up to you. And so I'm going to um, state the master's card. Remember, here's uh, the information about um, our doors being open. So uh, Sundays, it should say 11 o'clock. I just noticed that. So we're open. Um, Tuesdays, it's actually the fitness classes haven't started.
but Bible study is on Zoom, 6.30 to 7.30. Saturdays is what you're doing now. Sundays um, is at 11 o'clock. So we moved it uh, to 11 o'clock to match the Saturday service, amen? And then if you have not on the back of this information is the master's card. If you want one, you just uh, uh, ask for one, okay? So let us say the master's card together, the master's card. Uh, your account limit is some 30, 60, 100, and 1,000 fold. Matthew 13, 8, 13, 28, Mark 4, 20, and Deuteronomy 1, 11. Unlimited favor is granted to those who believe. Every sin in our past and in our future is forgiven in accordance with Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. Who are you bringing to Christ? This was a month of evangelism. So God is speaking to me about where we're going. And I'm excited about where God is taking us. Every sickness and disease covered by the blood. Exodus 15, 26. Every debt covered by the blood. Matthew 6, 9. Every person who hurt me covered by the blood. Isaiah 54, 17. Every need right now and in my future is covered by the blood. Have faith and remember, it is the Lord thy God who gives me the power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 8, 18. This is my abundant season, Ephesians 3.20 and Galatians 6.9. His grace is sufficient. I will love the unlovable, teach the unteachable, forgive the unforgivable, and forget it. Throw it into the sea of forgiveness to walk in the phenomenal favor of God. Hallelujah. Uh, you are phenomenal. Now use your master's card today. Um, remember that God will break every chain. Uh, if you need prayer, call me. The number is in the chat area, 937-275-3770. Um, and never, ever, never leave home without Jesus. How about that? Remember, it is your abundant season at 1 o'clock. Um, look at our Facebook page to get the link. It is the prayer conference hosted by Pastor uh, Stephanie Wanza out of Atlanta, Georgia, and I will be doing the corporate prayer for the conference. Don't forget uh, Easter weekend on Saturday, uh, we will be uh, at Christ Cathedral uh, up in Wilmingport, uh, Williamsport, Ohio, uh, with Apostle Malone. So we're not having a Saturday service for the first time in 11 years, but we will be supporting a, a, a host church uh, where I will be preaching that day. Uh, God bless you and keep you. And I hope to see you on Zoom at one o'clock, just an hour from now at the prayer conference. Remember, God bless you and it is your abundant season.